this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on the May the 9th at 5 p.m. First thing, I would like to ask Meredith Skaggs to come forward and lead us in a prayer, and then Nick Esther is going to lead us in a pledge to the flag. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the opportunity to gather here tonight and serve you in this work. I ask that you be with us tonight, that you grant wisdom to those who lead this community, and that they hear your voice, and that they feel your guidance in their hand, your hand in their everyday life. I pray for the members of this community. Lord, we are broken, and we desperately need you. I ask that you put a blessing over this community, that we see your work active, living, and breathing, so people can see how real you are. Uh, be with us as we leave this place to later today. Uh, that we can go out and serve our community more uh, and so people can see you. I ask all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I thought she was Thank I'm sorry. I thought she was walking away. And I we had <laughs> I thought you were doing a good job, though. Thank you, folks. <laughs> we appreciate it. Sorry about that. I just saw her leave. I thought she got through the pledge. Look at that. We've got $1,500 a month. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the, uh, before you had the minutes of the previous meeting of April 24th, uh, do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to Sam Small. Yes, I do. No, Jason. Second by Jason Bullock. Uh, are there any discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Minutes are approved. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including the late list. So moved. Motion by Larry Camp. Second by Sam Small. Discussion? Being a hearing none, uh, roll call. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphe? Yes. Um, before you have the treasurer's April financial report for April 2018, uh, we just need to acknowledge that she gave it to us. So moved. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Joe Byron. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. That one's approved. And in the same manner, we have the clerk's April 2018 financial statement. So Motion by Larry Cowan. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. The motion carries. That's also dropped off for quarterly report. It's not on the agenda. Do we need to prove it too? Yes. Okay, Bess is quarterly report as well. So I'll make acknowledge make, make that we acknowledge. Motion by Jason Bullock, second by Sam Small. Is that it? Yep. All in favor say aye. Aye. Close like sign. Motion carried. Uh, next, I want to introduce to you Jim Askins. He's come in from uh, to give us a report on Kentucky Wire which is something that uh, we've been a lot of excitement about for a couple years. And uh, now we maybe get some more definite uh, uh, news on it. So uh, welcome, Jim. Thank you, David. Uh, Larry and David know me. And, uh, most of y'all don't, uh, don't know me. But uh, I lived in Ohio County for 14 years, and all four of our children were, were born where we lived here. And we lived up around Dundee, Narrows, up in that area. And, <coughs> be back home and just uh, glad to be here and thank for giving me a few minutes. But first thing I always like to do is, and David mentioned it, but how many of y'all are familiar with the Kentucky Wild Project? 
everybody. And I mean, you know, it's been going on for a while, and it's kind of been an off and on type thing. But it started under Governor Bashir. It's continued under Governor Bevan. And the, and the goal of it is to get the infrastructure in place of, of uh, fiber uh, uh, installed throughout one, all 120 counties in the Commonwealth to get the capability to have high-speed broadband access in, everywhere in the state. And what the state did was when, when, when this was started, they created the Kentucky Communications Network Authority, or the KCNA. That's the public side of it because it's a public-private partnership. I'm on the private side of it, and I work for an organization that's called the Design Build LLC. Our office is in Lexington, and that's made up of Black and & Veatch and Legcore companies. Two companies are in that. We have designed the project. We are managing the construction of that project. Legcore is a company that I work for, and we also have a 30-year maintenance agreement on that project. So this is something that's going to be ongoing for a while, and uh, you know it's a good thing. Now, like I mentioned, it's a public-private partnership, and it's the largest uh, and first the telecom public-private partnership in the entire country. And to put that in perspective about how large it is, it, it, if you go, it's about 3,400 miles of fiber being installed. And if you go from Seattle to Miami, that's 3,000 miles. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fiber that's being installed. And it's already having some benefits with it because U.S. News & World Report Last year, Kentucky was ranked 48th in internet access. This year, we've already moved up to 36. And we still have, we, we've only installed a little over 700 miles of fiber on the project, and there's still a lot to go on it, and it'll be completed within the next couple of years or so. But it's already paying dividends. Now, one thing I want to make sure that you understand about it, I mentioned KCNA a while ago. The state entity, what, part of what they want to do is they want to put state offices on its own network. And it can be, you know, circuit court clerk, court clerk, or, or county clerk, just all the different offices that KCNA uh, chooses in each county. So that's where it's going to. We, it's called a middle mile. We don't go to homes or businesses. That's not part of this project. It's just getting the infrastructure in each community so that each community can decide how they want to do that through a, a partnership, a public entity, a private entity. It can be a new or an existing entity. It's just a lot of different opportunities and ways to do that. But again, just understand that we don't go to the homes or businesses. It's only going to these state office buildings or where the state is, is on various state networks. That's the only places that it's going to. And half of it is for that part of it, going to the state network. The other half is for that open access side of it because the state has already come in agreement with an entity that's going to uh, handle the wholesale side of it. So they're going to sell bandwidth, the prices and all that hasn't come out yet, but they're going to do that and then people or ISPs will resell that on to businesses and to individuals, to homes. Now, uh, you know, all of y'all are involved in economic development because you sit on this before you know how important it is. David and I met about this uh, late last year with some other uh, people here in the community. Uh, this is like my 21st or 22nd fiscal court I've addressed so far. I've got about 35 or 40 more to go. But economic development, because you know this high speed broadband is just as important as transportation and your water and your road, you know roads and electricity and everything. It's vital. And I was in Union County this morning, and the economic development was there too. And one of the magistrates asked the economic development director. And she said, absolutely, because they've already, in, in a lot of communities, lose opportunities to have new business come in because they just don't have some of this infrastructure in place. That's going to help address that. Uh, you have uh, health care is also addressed as well. Again, Union County uh, has uh, come up with a, a teledentistry grant, 50-some thousand dollars they're going to do teledentistry over video. You know, you hear about telemedicine where there's actually prognosis, diagnosis made, through on video, same thing with healthcare, especially in more of your rural areas. You have education. So much of kids do now do their work on tablets or on uh, laptops, and they do it remotely. And a lot of times, especially the farther out you go away from the uh, uh, population centers, you have less and less coverage on that. So that, it addresses that. Public safety, there's just a lot of things that this involves. And again, this is something that has increased dramatically over the last few years, and it's going to continue to increase the technology for the foreseeable future. Now, Kentucky, what it is, the entire state is divided up into six rings or six areas, okay? 
Ohio County is in the largest area called Ring 4. Ring 4 basically goes from I-65 west all the way to Mississippi. So it's by far the largest ring. Right now, this ring is scheduled to be completed October 13th of 2020. So a little over two years from now is when that's scheduled to be completed. Uh, you know, and, and just some of the things that some of the uh, local communities are doing, they're forming different types of committees, they're getting people together. You know, again, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but to start to plan now. How can your community, uh, you know, take advantage of this opportunity? Uh, I met earlier after I left uh, Union County, I stopped at Grad and met with uh, Jatin, the executive director there, and some of the staff there, again, updating them and bringing them up to speed on what the latest is and everything on this. So, you know, again, there's a lot of people involved in this and a lot of different people are working together to see the best way to take advantage of it. Uh, you know, I don't want to take up too much time on it. It, it does, I will tell you the route that it takes. The, the main part of it actually goes along basically US 60 coming out of Louisville and going through, uh, you know, Meade County and Breck and Hancock through Davis County. And what the route coming into Ohio County actually breaks off there in Davis County and comes down in, in Ohio County along 231. It's a little spark, it's shoot straight. Right, it's, it's a lateral line is what it's called. Because the main backbone, you know, has 288 strands. You get some of these lateral lines, they don't have near that much, but it's still more than enough capacity because the state even talks about if they put all their thing, all their different uh, offices and things together on uh, as much as they couldn't combine them, all they would do is take up two strands. So you're talking about an astronomical amount of capacity that is there for future use. But it does come down to uh, 231 and goes into the northern part of uh, Beaver Dam. So, you know, it's going to be here in the central part of the county. And again, it's going to be up to y'all or others to look <coughs> at and see how it's going to be able to be distributed out. And it can be wireless technology has improved greatly. That's something that is more cost effective. You can do it in phases. There's just a lot of different ways that you can look at it and, and, and uh, tackle the situation. Uh, you know, now we have people coming out and there's going to be more and more work. We're really ramping up. I got off a conference call about two hours ago and there's going to be people here in the area in the not too distant future. And David, even maybe like KCNA may be contacting you on some of the state office buildings or some of the offices that are going to be connected with the project. They're going to be starting to do that right now because I was in Bullock County a week ago today and they contacted them a day or two after I was there. So I'm not saying it's going to be a day or two, but it's going to be here pretty shortly when they're going to be contacting you. But uh, I just want to give you, uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to get hand out my uh, business cards to y'all. But if you have any constituents, have any questions or have any issues when people, when the crews start coming around, if you would, refer them to this. It's a toll-free number. It's our call center, and it just allows us to be able to track and pick up on any type of issues or any, any patterns that may come about. But that number is 888. 511-9918. Again, 888-511-9918. Our website is KentuckyWireProject.com, spelled out. The state website is KentuckyWired.ky.gov. Both of those websites have a wealth of information on them. They're continually being updated. We talked about that while we're on our call, updating ours and everything. But all of that is going on. There was a lot of questions and issues about it. Those have been answered. It's fully funded. We're bringing it and get ready because it's coming. So, I mean, Dave, I don't know if you want to take any questions or me take any questions. I'd be uh, happy if these, to. If, if these guys here have any, uh, that would be great. And, and uh, you didn't mention it, but there'd be companies like uh, Q Wireless and others those that will still do that last mile. Right, they, they will have much better hookup to get to to get that last mile from. Well, you, right, because you have the infrastructure in place that maybe is not there. It, it is a, it is a state of the art network that's going to have speeds. That the equipment is going to be the limiting factor on this because the backbone itself. I don't know how much you understand about it. It's a hundred gig backbone. The lateral lines and everything coming in. I mean, even going to the office buildings and stuff. That's a one gig line going into all of those. Now. When you're talking about the ISPs and what speeds they're going to provide, that's going to be a cost factor and those types of things too. But it is, I know the engineers in our office are excited about it and these, some of these guys have worked in the, in the industry for 30 years and if they get excited about what the technology is involved in this project, that tells me something I should tell y'all too. So it's, it's a state of the art uh, project and network and it's going to serve Kentucky's needs for decades to come. 
Any of you have questions for Jim? Appreciate it. Just if y'all would just pass those down and share them and everything. And Thank you, sir. You know, I'll be back in town periodically, D uh, David, whether in person or over the phone, updating you. Any other news that comes up, I'm sure Grad will have some. Uh, updates as well but again thank y'all and uh you know again it's, it's good to be back in ohio county god bless you good so two years from october we're supposed to be complete is that the spur coming down 231 into or is that that, just, that's 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 the whole the, the this ring is the last ring to be completed and it's scheduled to be completed and that is october 30th of 2020 and by then that means that the entire state should be lit and ready to go and as far as y'all are coming down into northern part of Beaver Dam. Yeah, all, I mean, that, when, I don't have the construction schedule in front of me. You know, it's not going to be right up there because we have to be some testing and things like that as well. That's where, you know, that's where the Kentucky Wire probably that's where, is. That's where, the, that's where the main line or the lateral line will be going down into that area in there. And again, we only go where the state tells us to go. Yeah. So, you know, David, maybe just keeping tabs on that, on, on the sites and everything to make sure nothing changes mm -hmm. or anything like that. Uh, and, and again, you know, if, if y'all need any if, if a point of contact or anything like that, that's what my contact information is there for. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or work with y'all any way that I can. Thank you, Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, tell, tell family hi for us. I will do that. And, and include, include Ray if you sing. I will. We're about ready to have supper together. Oh, okay. All so right. Thank y'all. Uh, gentlemen. <coughs> Uh, I know that most of you have already talked to Ann about this, but uh, getting close to the year, end of the year, we've got to do a budget amendment, and it's 2018-3, and we'll have to do two. First read. So I need a motion for that. So motion for Larry Camp. Second. Second to Sam Small. Any discussion or questions for Ann on that? Being in a row call. Small. Yes. Willow? Yes. Barnes? What exactly is this? Just co severance? This is that 487000 that we did on all the black topping. Yeah. And I did, on paper, I just needed that much more money to make the account balance. Okay. We got the whole check, but on paper, I needed that much more. Yes, yeah, so the short answer, Joe, is yes, it does. Have, it, does it is to do with the co severance. And the big cap, the big pavement project we did. Price of blacktop went up during the time, from the time we approved it until the time it was actually that, that is a question. Why we're on that, David, I thought uh, when we bid in last year, we took the bid from Scotty's that, uh, that we had uh, a fiscal year to, that it couldn't go up. But what, can somebody explain to me why that it's taken a jump? I know oil has, but that's not our fault for the budget that, for them bidding in the, at a certain amount. That's now it. the oil didn't make this much of it. It's, it's a, the rock solid, it's only for a few days when it gives us price. But we never can get our ducks in a row that quick. No, but I thought we last we year- We took a bidding process, and right? they bid the- They bid the bid tonnage process. I think it's yes. only like 13,000. Yeah. Let me look. <coughs> we do that every year. Yeah. So it's $13,000 difference on the- Yeah, let me look and see what that was. It was on the blank list. Yeah, it was 13000 we bid it every year. And it's it was about 60 some dollars a ton put in place, wasn't it? $68 or something. Yeah, it's like closer to 70 It's been a while, so I don't. A lot of times, no, yeah. it was that other one that went over on Hoopy Hill. This one was the 487. Hoopy Hill's the one that went over on that. The one we've done on the emergency? Yeah. yeah. But back to my question. I don't, you, no, I don't, it still ended up being the 131. Was, I think it was one. <laughs> no, maybe, I'm gonna have to go look. No, it was. It, no, it was this 400 and some thousand. It went over. It, it so went over. Yeah. 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 It, it did go up, and uh, oh, and it was the length of time thing that thing. it yeah. was. Uh, so on this right here, and this is just where. You, it's just on paper. Yeah. I know that's when when we did the budget for this year, we did half a million dollars mm -hmm. for that house bill money, and I had used too much of it. To have on paper enough to pay that 487. So it's it's just on paper. It's accounting. I can't amend in the whole 487 yeah. because I already had some money in that account, okay. and the state only lets me amend in what I need. Okay. On that. But not to belate the issue, uh, 
we had a bidding process, and can somebody tell me why the blacktop is taking up? somewhat a substantial increase over the bid it had for it last year. Well, like for example, this one, this just took the first first row here that we looked in the flex money, Ralph Road, that makes $5,000 difference just on that road. That's yeah. not counting. Exactly. Well, that's my question. But the, it was, the fuel no, spots it was 14, do that and everything they've got to add on. Of that 487. But they bid the price though. It was 14,328. I'm sure in the contract, it's got, it allows them to do that. Justin, would you take a look at that contract and see? Uh, well, I doubt there's a contract. Imagine it's just, just, I just think the bid, bid. We, yeah. of the bid. Well, we, took a, we took a sheet on the bid oh, okay. put in place. Yeah. But you know what? With bank check, too, it may not exceed that because it's based on prices he gives for these roads. Yeah. And it may be based on the price, but it don't sound like it. But well, it shows right here. This is it shows 73.59 a ton. Okay. Johnson. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What are we voting on? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, that, the, the motion carries the first reading of budget amendment 2018-3. Well, I mean, back. Uh, Miranda, are you, can you give me the, I uh, can get it the for bid you. and yeah, all I those can. things? I think what it is, Larry, it's like fuel. They bid to do a certain percentage over the rack price. I don't know what they call it on the oil, but on gasoline they call it the rack price. Now, is that just the gasoline for the uh, equipment? Well, I'm talking about the black top. Like that. She's using I've, that same thing. I'm using that as an oil. example. Whatever they, I guess the market price or whatever they have, that's their baseline, and they bid to do a certain percentage over that. But I'll get that email to but you. But on the same token, Ann, uh, it's never went down, and when oil went down, it the black top didn't yeah. come down with it. Well, now it did go down uh, a couple years ago because I got it. I got it cheaper when it went down yeah. per month. The, in, the okay. blacktop index went down, but okay. I think they use the blacktop index is what okay. it says in the bid. But we we need to look into it. But yeah. okay. but I, I do know that there was because I was chasing it and holding off because it okay. was dropping. Yeah. You were trying to get yours done at the best possible cost. Yeah. 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 So. Hey, uh, gentlemen. But unfortunately, it's going back up now. Uh, before you have the health insurance things, yeah. I wasn't got it. And this is formality. We've really done well this year. Uh, this fits the old budget, the new budget, and everything, but we need to go ahead and pass, uh, approve this right for the uh, health insurance. Where's this? Oh, she's I'll entertain. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Can we, <coughs> second, second for discussion, model. can we just get a copy of like the, um, what they're, none of the plan, the, the, uh, the structure of the plans, none of them changed. Still offering the, the still, uh, still offering the three single. plans. Okay. And the deductibles are still the same? Yes. Yes. For the Everything's okay. the same. That's uh, yeah. All of sure. our employees, for the ones here that may be interested in this, have a one free plan, uh, and then they can pay money themselves and upgrade that plan. What about the upgrades? Did it go up? Yeah. Just very little. If you'll look at the, you see where the yellow column is? It went yeah, up the uh, previous year. Yeah, six dollars a month. Right behind the side really, of it. On the buy, it went out. The buy six dollars a week. I mean, yeah, the buy six dollars went up about uh, about thirty dollars. Thirty four six fifty six. Yeah. Well, okay. weekly. Week. Yeah. Week. Uh, you can look six dollars a that week. weekly rate. Yeah. But we're still paying the whole. Right. Yeah. For the, the for the core plan, the base plan. Yeah. We yeah. only have right. one employee that covers um, their children. Everybody else is just on the employee. The I don't see how anybody could. Yeah. You'd be working for that. You'd be working for insurance if you don't pay. Yeah. There are people that work for school board and do that, and they write a check at the end of the month to the school board, and they worked all month. Uh, there are people. for health insurance. That happens. Hey, uh, uh, we did you get the second on there? What do you mean? Yes. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and roll call. I don't know. He said that it went up. If you look yes. at the auction, yeah. How much yeah. It or that's how much it was. That's, yeah, so six dollars. Previous year. Yeah. The, yeah. Adopt the health insurance plan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's last year. That's this year. Okay. That motion carried. Uh, you have this. We do every year. Does everybody have a copy of this? No, but I need everyone to sign. Where everyone it's one where everybody, 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 everybody signs. Sign. Yes. Well, let me sign first. Me <coughs> What's this about? This is, every year we do this. It's for a rural and municipal aid. It's for our gas tax money. 
That's where we get the did most you, of our money for our work on our roads. Hey, you said when I talked to you though that that's going to be the same. It's not gone down. Did it go down? Uh, I don't think so at all. At the time period of getting, it's a little bit delayed on the right, on the time. Um, of course, it does vary a little bit what you get within a year anyway, depending on the formula of the fifths and all the things that go into the fifths. How many checks come a year on that? I usually get two, but they send a letter that doesn't sound like that. That's what I sign right here. What I sign right there. Yep. One check. Four checks. Okay. It sounds like the money was still signed. Yeah. Okay. You mean like there's another place too? Mm -hmm. All right. uh, do I have a motion? Yes. Motion by Larry Cam. Second motion. Second by Jason Bullock. Further discussion? David. Yes. You said this is something we do every year, but you know, if it wasn't on my agenda, I picked up on Friday. I would have liked to have that ahead of time to look at it. That's my fault. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but, but it is. You know what I mean? So I can read through it. I can send it to you if you'd like as well. Okay. I'm going to put that on it. What? Huh? I don't know. What did you say? Okay. Go ahead and cover. Well, uh, he's, he's yes. Okay. Justin's already looked at it. Never cool. it's not here. Justin, I, I would imagine looking? it's. A, I looked at the seventeen eighteen, and I would imagine it's about the same. Judge, is it? Yes. Yes. I, I, but I can look at it too if you want. They got okay. a formula. They Johnson. Use. Yes. Cam. Yes. Morphy. Yes. Okay, that'll be passed in for all of you sign. So let's go ahead and do that. So they're passing it around. Go to that end and then we'll bring it back to this end. Go ahead and do your motion under committee reports. Oh, okay. Not right now. Right, when we get to committee reports rather than waiting for your line. Okay. Here, you need to sign that. Mary needs to sign it and get back to Miranda. You'll have to put the nose over there. And that's lying for you, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next, we've got two little personnel issues. Um, the one that we hired at the park last time, didn't got a better job, didn't come to work. So it's the same scenario. It's uh, seasonal. By the way, this is seasonal. It took the place of a... Uh, full time uh, because it's reflected that way in the next budget there's no need to start anybody for these few months at a full time uh, so we have William Neighbors grounds seasonal 868 an hour effective 5918 um, so uh, I put that name up and I need to roll call it small full up this is who uh, he wanted. Yes. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Cam. Yes. Morphe. Yes. Okay. And the other one is uh, we've had a vacancy, a full-time vacancy for a little while in the occupational tax, but we're going to fill it with the seasonal till we see what we can do there. Uh, we have a girl that's coming in from college. She's going to work there the summer as a. Uh, Seasonal and the seasonal taking place of a full time and and uh, for that period of time So it's Kelsey Brown Classified as a clerk 970 hour effective uh, five uh, uh, Nine eighteen Yes Small. Uh, uh, If I may just say one thing David when on this uh, occupational tax uh, She is instructed that that as they say in Vegas, everything happens in the occupational act, uh, office, yes. stays in the occupational office. That's absolutely right. Okay. Small? Yes. Bullock? 
Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Okay. Now we're ready to move right on into committee reports, and I'm going to first, I know the uh, road committee met this afternoon, and uh, uh, Larry, uh, I think you have a motion from that committee. Yeah, I just want to entertain a motion to uh, transfer $114,000 from the general fund emergency reserves into the LGEA fund. Second. Any further discussion? Did we ever determine how we were going to put that back in there? Hopefully from FEMA. Is that correct, Dan? If that's what you all choose to do. I mean, it needs to be back in there from somewhere. Yeah. I mean, if you want to put that in the motion, then that will require me to do that. Yeah, well, the, the ones that made and second the motion would have to do that. I need a second. Uh, Larry, more from oh. seconded. You guys doing that in your motion? Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't have a bit of problem as long as we're as long as we're up above board and all legal and all that. If we're allowed we to do sure it, we got enough money to complete the FEMA projects we turned in, though. Yeah. Yeah, but we're not going to, we're not going to risk our emergency fund. Well, I know, but if if we come up short on finishing the projects we submitted for and didn't get them finished, then we, we got to find it somewhere else, not the emergency fund. Authorized treasurer to transfer funds as needed. I mean, that, that seems like that would be illegal. You, you, federal government give you money to complete projects, and then you couldn't complete it because you didn't have enough money. Well, is, is part of that income? I think. I think yes, and a whole lot of it's, it's already done. Sure. I mean, I'm just a whole lot of it's already done. The reason we hadn't transferred, if it hadn't been done, we'd have had it within a road fund. That's right. But yeah, if we, got, if we got it in the end time or something, then we transfer it. It's some other. In that motion, then as time comes where we see that it, we can revisit that. And yeah, I just, you well, because Ann made a comment about some of it was hard, hard numbers, you know. Yeah, but some of those hard numbers are stuff that's already yeah, done, that. too. Yeah, we just want to make sure. Well, we can always revisit it. I mean, if it's in the motion, we can. I'd rather do that because it, it's a cash flow issue right now. You know, I'd, I'd hate to. You all have me put it right back as soon as we got the thing made because we might need that until we get these checks from the CRA. The so you want to hold off and revisit it? I mean, go ahead and do the well, transfer as far as putting it back. Go ahead and do it, and you can say at some point we'd yeah, like to at, Well, let's see. At some point when money becomes available, then it's to be uh, reimbursed back into the uh, general fund emergency funds. General fund emergency funds. Is that what is coming out of the? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Where are we at now in general fund? Where's that thing? 416. But minus this, right? Minus this. So, we're waiting for Sam to vote. Small. 302. Yes. Yes, but we're revisiting it when it's in this way. Yes. I'll put it in the discussion portion of the minutes. <laughs> Barnes? The, yes. What's so comical is Jason's got 40 cents. <laughs> I understand. That's why I want you to have it. I spent uh, mine. I, you know, I think it's an emergency right now when you need the money to do some money. Well, that's also an emergency. You also the emergency. You finish your emergency fund. That's why we're getting nothing. You, know, you had the road, so that's that. Yes. Down. Yes. Morphium. Yes. I just found I just found the humor in that, Jason. Okay. So. Yeah, well, I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to now. You need a long under <laughs> committees. Uh, we're not ready to report on animal tonight, are we, Jason? No. Okay. No. Let me pass these out. Joe Barnes. Jason Bullock. Sam Small. Ray Cam. Ray Morphew. And Justin came. Is this a pack of full of money? Yeah, it is. Uh, let me tell you what this is. I'd really want it's, it's to be a little bit of change. That's a, that's the a budget. Uh, the only change in it has been the little bit that reflected in this insurance, which is very little, and then where we did not have to pay as much 
retirement as we thought we were going to. Matter of fact, we had to pay significantly less than the yeah. first budget show. Yeah, that's good. That's put back in here. And I would like to, as many as you can, come out 4 o'clock Monday afternoon for a informal discussion on the budget. As, as Larry uh, Morphew said, go over it line by line at 4 o'clock Monday. Monday. So we'll, we'll talk about it then. One uh, are there any more uh, committees reporting? One, one thing I just want to make mention <clears throat> to the court, even though our retirement was just about a third or 30 percent or whatever this year, next year it'll be 66 percent, and the following year, if I'm correct, it'll be 100 percent. Yes. So what the court is facing, not only maybe some a some, little bit of cutting this year, but next year it'll be twice as bad on the retirement and 100 uh, percent the following year. Well, so. we're hoping for a lot more revenue, though. Uh, hope you're right, Judge. Yes. With all my yes. Because I don't have time to advertise in the paper. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am announcing this publicly that there's a budget workshop uh, for magistrates and uh, staff. Which one? It's going to be here at four o'clock on uh, Monday. Are there any more committees to report? Any more committees met this uh, two-week period? Can we not just do it Wednesday when we're having the, the next meeting? Are you talking about this next Monday? This, this coming Monday. Okay. Yeah, this coming Monday. Hmm. Well, uh, I, I would rather, I for sure want this first reading passed of the next court Sorry, meeting. No, no, so any questions, I don't want to talk about now. Uh, well, it is okay, a uh, Sam. It is a thought, man. Did you say heaven? No. No. Jason. Joe. No. Larry. No. Larry. What's that? Doing? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I just want to. Everybody's welcome, sir. You made the 12th at 4 p.m. The Senior Center in Horse Branch to meet with 5th District Magistrate Morphew. Come meet and eat. Go have hot dogs and chili. And what time is that? 4 o'clock. Okay. Can I wait just for you maybe learn? Sure, I can. Okay. Are you gonna gonna have mustard and relish for the hot dogs? Mmm, that's gonna make a tough budget, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. Is anybody from the general public got anything for the good of the body? Yes. Gotta be for the good, Jake. Can, Briefly. Can I, I won't I won't keep you now. I I didn't want to bring this up under necessarily a committee report, but uh, I just want to make some comments, uh, not just to you all, but to the public that will be listening to this. In regard to the Kentucky Wire Project and the presentation that we heard from Mr. Askins, um, if you are unaware, the program is currently being audited by the Kentucky State Auditor's Office. Um, it's in bad shape. I don't know how much he went into this, but... Uh, They've spent, I think, over 70% of the over $300 million budget and less than 25% of the fiber has been laid. Uh, it was pretty contentious during this most recent legislative session if it was even going to continue to be funded. He did mention that it was continued to be funded. And then I think there was a, a legislator that actually opened up a legislative review of the project. Uh, I, I pulled him aside after the meeting or, or after his presentation and, and asked him about the pricing. They have this third party organization set up called the KCNA, the Kentucky Communication Network Authority, that is going, going to be determine, determining the wholesale price of this internet. Like the, he said, that it's a middle mile, so they're not actually serving customers, they're relying on last mile providers, the ones that are actually be hooking up the houses and sending people bills. They have to purchase wholesale internet from this middle mile network. The issue is, is that no one knows what the price of that wholesale internet is going to be yet. So if I were to, if, if I or any other John Q was going to look at being a last mile provider, uh, the city of Hartford has even toyed with the idea of maybe doing a municipal last mile network. Well for you, for you to be able to create that business model, the, the number that you need, the number that all of your other numbers are going to be based on is what that wholesale price is going to be. And we don't know. He says it's going to be coming in fall of 2020. Sure. How long do you think it would take to build a network, whether it's private or public, through a city even apart from size? 
So they're relying on this revenue of these last mile providers that are going to hook into this network. Yet no one's jumping on board, you know, because they don't know what the wholesale price is going to be. So in 2020, when that line gets lit up, it'll be the state offices that are on it, and that is going to save the state money, hopefully. But, you know, it could be another two years after that before people have last mile networks that are built that are built into it. But beyond not knowing what the price is, my worry is that play, larger cities like even Bowling Green, where there are interconnection points of multiple long haul fiber providers, they have to compete in an open market for wholesale, you know, wholesale rates because they have there's customers, last mile providers have different options. Last I checked, 10 gigs of wholesale internet was $2,000 a month. When I tried to get a quote from one of our local fiber providers, I won't name which one, for just one gig of wholesale internet, it was $5,500 a month for one. Whereas at, at an interconnection point, it's $2,000 a month for 10. Well, I've asked Kentucky Wired people multiple times, is it going to be say $2,000 a month for 10 gigs like on the open market? Or are you all going to come in and say, oh, well, the going rate in a place like Ohio County is $5,500 a month for one gig. We'll, we'll give you uh, $5,400. I mean, there's multiple definitions of what's competitive, right? Mm -hmm. But if they come in here and they offer us wholesale or any, if they offer the last mile providers wholesale internet at what the going rate here is minus one and say that's competitive, then we're not any better off than we are today. When it when it hits in 2020, if that's how they price this thing, then we will not be better off, any better off than we are here in 2018. So that's a worry of mine, and I just wanted the public to be aware of where this project stands and, and that big issue, I think that's the biggest issue with the project right now, is that no one knows what the wholesale price for this internet is going to be. Chase, is there any way that we might know through them? Is there any way we might know prior to 2020? Well, uh, Jim said outside that they've, uh, they, they keep telling him because there's a lot of different actors in this <coughs> arrangement and LEDCOR, who, who he works for, is the primary subcontractor and builder of the network. The KCNA is a separate organization who sets the price. He said that his latest correspondence uh, with the KCNA, they said that, that they would have it soon. But I, I've heard that before multiple times. So I don't know what they were saying soon in August at the governor's conference as well. Late May, they never gave a price on their uh, Kentucky Wired. Yeah. Right. If class. you find out, would you uh, bring that back to the court if we some if judge don't somebody don't find out prior to that? Absolutely. I mean, I think right. it needs to be put out statewide sure. because that's the whole project. And that, I'm sure yeah. they get a lot of pushback. You know, okay. AT&T sued them in, in several places. I think uh, Mobile being one of them. Uh, didn't even want them on the poll. What other, what other uh, last mile providers do we have besides Q Wireless here in the county? Um, none currently. They don't. I mean, that's the thing about Ohio County is that we have fiber in the county. If a business along 231, I mean, we got fiber at the hub. We're paying, in my opinion, too much for it, but we don't have a choice. There's no competition. But if a business wants fiber. They can, along 231, they can theoretically... You got to go to it. I but bet in the house. the yeah. purpose of this yeah. is to increase yeah. competition. The competition drives down the prices. don't know much about but, using it, but as I, I said, <laughs> if, if, if I form a last mile, you know, Vincent Fiber, and am serving customers, but I'm having to, you know, get my wholesale at over twice what the open market rate is, say down in Bowling Green, then the economics won't work, yeah. and we're not any better off. So can you also check in too? I asked Charlie about it, but you probably know who to talk to. But they're supposedly laying fiber out center town down 85 to Big Rivers. Big Rivers is paying for a private line. But I mean, is that a private line that people can pay and hook up to it, or is it? Well, so that the data has to be transmitted back to the middle mile and the long haul transmission network you know, that crisscrosses the globe somehow. So they're paying, even if they're paying to lay that line themselves, they're having to hook on somewhere and pay a wholesale rate. I mean, they don't actually necessarily own that line. They're paying to have the line laid, but whoever the provider is owns the line. So I mean, can individuals hook up on them? And who would they talk to? So, I mean, I guess you could consider, like, 
the, the deal that we struck with Spectrum to get fiber at the hub, yeah. you know, that, I, don't, I don't think that's any yeah. different really than if a private citizen said, hey, I want fiber at my address. We got a little pushback from the other provider about how much it was going to cost to do the drop, to take it from the middle mile to that, you know, to do the last mile, from the middle mile to the house. So I don't know what they're paying. Um, I guess, you know, theoretically anybody can do it. But it ain't changed you know, much. Are people, most people in Centertown don't have insurance funds to be able to, to lay that amount of line? No way. I mean, we got lucky because the hub is just right off the Right, and I think it's kids that, is that, because I don't understand it all. But can they tie into that line if they talk to the provider? And who would have talked to them? Is what I'm wondering about. I don't know who has, I don't know if at and and Spectrum both have a fiber out to center town. I don't know where the connection point is. They're putting it in right now. But I don't know. Other than just pulling over. I don't know where they're tapping in. Like, I understand them taking it out to the plant, but I don't know where they're tapping into the middle mile. Okay. Uh, but I can try to find that out. But from what I understand, they're going to be bringing it down 231 and serving the state office, as he said. And then. You know, hopefully we'll be able to get it at, at the county offices because, I, I mean, I know we already pay, uh, is it Spectrum we have here? We pay Spectrum and, and Q Wireless a lot of money, but, you know, hopefully we could be saving some money there. But, again, I, I just wanted to give the, the public uh, a little more uh, knowledge about where this project stands and, and the unknowns that are still out there. You know, it, it would, it's theoretically going to be great. It is a market rate and it does spur you know, private last mile providers coming in here and, and bringing Ohio County up to standard with a lot of these other places that have affordable high speed internet. But there's still a big chance that it might not. So we was hoping Q Wireless was our answer, but that certainly hadn't worked out well, has it? Don't get me started. We put, put, put a lot of eggs in that basket. Yeah, yeah. Is that somebody we need to contact? Or is that just, <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. You can't, I mean, you're doing it already. Well, they took it. Oh, okay. Uh, Thank so you, sir. I didn't take up so much time, but I felt like, you know, the public need to know after what they heard tonight, you know, where, where the whole thing stands. Thank you. Well, this means adjourned.